Muscle TV, proudly brought to you by Maxines, for the body you want, and Maxes, because life's too short to be small. Hello everyone, I'm Tony Doherty and welcome to this very special Viewer's Choice episode of Muscle TV. Thanks to all the people that voted on the Muscle TV website and it looks like you want to get shredded as tonight we head back into the kitchen with Extreme Chef Peter Wright to take another look at a meal plan guaranteed to get you lean and we revisit a workout from a couple of years ago that can be done practically anywhere but is perfect if you're looking to get ripped for summer. First up though, we've got a couple of regulars back and it's no surprise that they top the polls for Viewer's Choice. It's a dynamic duo, folks, Shembury and Goble, in absolute ripping condition from a segment we shot last year that are going to take you through a workout for an often under-trained body part. Take it away, boys. We're going to train some hamstrings today. At some point, both Luke and I have made an effort to bring our hamstrings up to par with other body parts, so we're going to do the sort of program that uh, others could uh, utilise if they need to bring their hamstrings up. I've been training hammies by itself with calves for a couple of years now to try to bring up weaker body parts. A large portion of this workout I actually stole from Scott Goble, what he put on the Facebook page. Um, a lot of the exercises and the type of exercises he does while he does hammies, he's got awesome hammies, so I thought, you know, I'll learn off him. And I've got, gotten good results over the past 18 months doing similar principles that he trains with. I think a lot of guys do a leg day and they invest all their energy in their squats and their leg presses and lunges and things like that. So by the time they get to hamstrings, they do a few lacklustre sets of leg curls and, and move on and that's just not enough. The, the hamstring is a big muscle group, so it, it needs uh, a heavy workload and it needs a decent amount of volume. So I think if your legs in particular are under par, it's, it's a very good idea to split up your quads and your hamstring workouts. First exercise we're going to do is glute ham raises. So basically it's a body weight leg curl in a way. I find it to be my absolute number one hamstring developing exercise. All right, we're going to get started on our hamstring workout. I'm just going to warm up on the line leg curl before we get stuck into the ham glute raise. We're going to jump on an exercise where you have to do your full body weight. You can't do anything less than that. So it's essential we warm up first so you don't want to be tearing anything on the first movement of the workout. So that's it for the warm up. Time to move on to our first exercise, glute ham raises. I've never used this machine ever, and look, I'm very keen to use it because this is the, the machine I first uh, saw Scott use, and I've got to say, it's, it's an absolute killer. It's, it's different than the movement I do, so um, this is great, and it's good to get some tips off Scott on how to use it too, because like I said, I've got no experience with it, so it's good to have someone like Scott telling me how to use it. It's not an easy exercise. I perform it purely with body weight. Uh, don't add any resistance to it. Don't feel the need. The first time I ever performed this exercise, I did two reps and then cramped up. It's a pretty advanced exercise and you have to have a decent amount of hamstring strength in order to perform it properly. The thing I like best about the glute ham raises is you're moving your own body weight. It's very hard to start off with. Like the first time I did it, I think I could get maybe a couple of half attempts at doing a rep. Now I've moved up to about sets of eight to 10. It's taken probably 12 months to get to that. The biggest change for me compared to a lying leg curl is the fact that on a lying leg curl, your body stays stationary and you move your ankles up towards your glutes. Whereas with the glute ham raise, your, your legs are locked in and you're actually pulling your body weight up towards your legs. So it's kind of like it works the hammies in a completely different Way. For most heavy blokes that avoid bodyweight exercises, it's more of a cop-out than anything else. I mean, if you're developing strength in proportion with size, you should be able to incorporate your chins, your dips, your traditional bodyweight exercises, and in this instance, a, a glute ham raise. So it's just a case of maintaining a decent strength to weight ratio. I think that's uh, all she wrote on that one. We'll move on to the next exercise, the deadlift. We're not going to be setting any powerlifting records on the deadlifts today. I know, me in particular, I've got a few little issues which will prevent me from really impressing the viewers with some heavy weights. But as long as I feel the movement, that'll be the main thing for me. 
some people might think you know you've got to do it with with your back session i found over the past couple of years i've been doing deadlifts with my hammy day and actually having back on a separate day the, the main benefit for that was that basically on, on a back day you're absolutely smoked by the time you do all your back exercises deadlifts come around if you even leave it to the end you don't end up performing it to your full capacity or if you do it first you miss out on the rest of the session so by including it into the the hammy day i find not only does it work the hammy's better but you're actually stronger with, with your deads and you're able to perform your reps better because you're not tired from such a big back workout. I find that doing a deadlift second in the movement is very beneficial for me. I've already fatigued the hamstrings on the glute ham raise, so they're, they're firing. You've set up those neuromuscular pathways, so you can really feel your hamstrings working. I mean, you're never going to isolate anything with a deadlift. You're always going to get the glutes and the lower back and even to a, an extent some quads in there. But for me, I'm, I'm never going to have too much back thickness. So as long as my hamstring day is separated from my back day for 48 hours or more, that additional stimulus is only going to benefit me and I get to move some heavy weights and build some good hamstrings. So since I've introduced it into the hammy workout, not only am I lifting the most I've ever lifted in the deadlifts, but my hammies have also responded the best they have in all, all my training. Just finished deadlifts, both pretty smoked. We're gonna go on to uh, single leg uh, curls and that will finish off the hammy session. A little bit more of an isolated movement, a movement where you can really focus on the contraction and the squeeze, a unilateral movement, so again, you can balance out any asymmetries between the right and left side. Uh, so it's just a really good finishing movement. You're pretty much smashed after doing the deadlifts and the glute hand raise, so you're not gonna lift a whole lot of weight, uh, and your stabilizers are pretty much shot, so it's good to just jump on a machine and wrap it out. The majority of the exercises I do tend to be to failure, just due to the nature of the exercise. So the glute ham raises, I'm failing by eight to 10 uh, deadlifts if I'm going heavy and try to get a set out of you know eight to 10 again, and it'll be to failure. So I like to finish off the hammy workout with an isolation exercise, generally speaking around the 15, possibly 20 rep range. All right, that's Hemi's done. Good job, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank glad, you. glad you made it through it, okay? It's very enjoyable. Um, so who deadlifted more, just out of curiosity? Uh, you deadlifted oh, more, okay. but... Uh, right, so we'll just leave yeah, it at that. Yeah, Thank you very much. Your hamstrings would have been a lot we'll fresher it. after your uh, efforts that. on the glute hand I deadlifted race. more, so that's it. Thank you. Yeah. One out of three ain't bad. Ha <laughs> 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 good stuff, boys. That segment was shot over 12 months ago, and you know what? They haven't stopped the banter yet, and I doubt that they ever will. But that's how we like it, and obviously you do too. Awesome stuff. Okay, time for a break, but stay tuned for more Muscle TV, as when we return, we'll be back in the kitchen with the Extreme Chef to take another look at a nutritional plan to help get you shredded. The greatest anabolic supplement has been created by Alpha Pro Nutrition. A three-in-one formula that increases natural testosterone for building extreme muscle mass, decreases water-retaining estrogen, and stimulates nitric oxide production for massive pumps. Start maximizing your workouts with Greatest by Alpha Pro Nutrition. Greatness expected.